Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. What do you do if your graphics card's overheating, or even possibly your CPU, but you just don't have the money to basically buy a brand new water cooling system or strip down that 700 pound graphics card, which obviously you don't want to break? Well, this may be the solution for you. These products are from Acasa. They're only, what, just under seven pound a piece, so they're pretty good value. And what it is, is basically a PCI bracket, which you can attach two fans to. Well, you could have just one fan, that's up to you. But you have to buy the fan separately, but that allows you then to choose the right fan, what fits your needs. And you could even buy RGB fans and stuff like that if you wanted, plain black, totally up to you. The basics is you have these two fans, then position just underneath if your graphics card blowing fresh air up into your graphics card which should then allow it to cool down a bit better and also depending on how your case is laid out and if you've got a graphics card or not you could potentially have the fans pointing towards the cpu instead again helping cool it down so again pretty good products for just under seven pounds we do have links in the description just below if you're interested in purchasing otherwise keep tuned and we'll show you how they work Okay, so as you can see, we've got the PCI slot bracket for mounting one or two 80 or 92 millimeter fans, as well as the 120 millimeter version. They're, they're pretty much identical, apart from obviously one's designed for bigger fans than the other. The box itself, as you can see, is pretty much white with a bluish tint to the bottom, and it says it supports two fans at the specific sizes. Easy installation, sturdy metal on there as well and you can just see the parts there obviously these don't come with the fans you fit your own fans so pick up two fans from wherever uh, well, you've probably already got them and attach them on with these on the back it gives you a little bit more information let's just zoom in there so you can see the contents you've got the bit what would go all along the back of the case so that's like the PCI bracket and then you've got the brackets what attach the fans together and then some screws it's pretty simple there's not much in there and that one's exactly the same as well so it gives you a rough idea okay so this is what's inside the box well that's the box for the smaller one this is the contents of the bigger one they're identical apart from this bit is a little bit shorter on that one but otherwise, inside you've got your manual, which tells you how it works, how you put it together and so forth. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. So you've got your back plate, which again goes on the back of the PC, which you'll end up screwing in with this screw here. You've got then all the screws there which screw the fans together as well as screw the back plate to the fan. So first thing to know, the fans you need, need to be double thickness fans or standard thickness fans should I say. So basically you should have a roughly a 25 millimeter, I think it is, uh, depth on there for them to fit. So let's just have a look what that supports. Yeah, 25 millimeters. If it's any thicker, it isn't going to fit without bending them. So you need 25 millimeter thick fans for it to work. As you can see, that just fits in. If you have a fan which is 25 millimeters thick, but the fitting brackets on it are really slim, they're not all the way out, it's not going to work. Okay, so you need a fan which is double thickness, for example, or standard thickness, should I say, but basically, the fitting is as wide as the fan and the fan can be no more than 25 centimeters thick. If you're using thin fans, there are some of the markets which are as low as 20 millimeters, they won't work either. And again, this other fan here, this one is the right size and it just about fits, okay? But you go something too small, obviously that isn't gonna fit in there. Okay, so all you need to do First of all, is get a fan. Let's start off with, and the reason I'm using random fans rather than their own fans is just showing you, you can use any fan you want. So first of all, you push that bit into the bracket. Well, actually, first of all, you've got to figure out which way you want your air to blow. So you get your fans pointing in the right direction. If you have it in this way, it's going to blow the air down, well, depending on how you've got it, 
if you've got it fitted in your case like that, it's going to blow the air from the bottom to the top. So the bit where usually the sticker is, what tells you what type of fan it is, DC, whatever, and it's usually got the support embrace, that's the back of the fan. That's the way the air's going to flow through. So it'll flow out that side. So it goes in, usually where the sticker is for the branding, and it comes out where the basically the manufacturer's marks and specification model numbers are and so forth. But the basics is, you then get the bracket, push it into position, which is a nice tight fit actually. Get obviously two of these screws, they are what the class has, fan screws, and then you screw it in. And here we go, that's one. In all honesty, it doesn't really need that extra screw on the back, but we're putting it on anyway because that's how they tell us to do it. So that's one on there, okay? So it's pretty straightforward. Now, if you want to attach another fan, you get it. Again, we're going to use a completely different brand, so instead of Aerocool, we're going to use Be Quiet this time, just to show you that you can use any fan, okay? As long as it's that 25 millimeters thick and it's got standard thickness fittings. So to fit those together, you get your bracket, push it over the one, can be a bit tight, and then do the same with the other corner, and as you can see, just line them up right, yes, about right, might be a good idea just to screw one in, and once the one's in, you'll be able to fit it a lot better. Okay, so now let's fit the other one in, screw that one there. And again, get, make sure both fans are pointing the right way. Otherwise, you're going to have one pushing and one pulling, which unless you want it to do that, it might not be the most ideal situation. Okay, so that's screwed in that side. Then we'll do the same on the back. So that's one fitting done. And again, you can twist it a little bit to your liking. Obviously, you ideally want it straight. And then you get the second fitting, and just slide it over the bottom holes. You've got to get it lined up right. And then put two more screws in. And it's as simple as that really. Uh, there's not much else to do other than put it into your computer case. And once you've got it in your case, you need to make sure you plug your fans in. So obviously they need to plug it into the motherboard or your controller or whatever it may be. Let's see if I can get this one lined up 100%. That's the problem with anything like this, is getting them all lined up. But there you go, you've now got two fans attached together on this support brace. And this support brace then can go in your PC case and blow air towards well, your graphics card basically, to keep it nice and cool. And I'll show you an example in a second. Okay, so we've got this fitted in with the two different fans. Obviously, I'd normally recommend you use two of the same fans and they'll run at the same speeds. But this is just a demonstration to give you a rough idea. As you can see, the support bracket's there. It is screwed in. This is our test bench. It's a fraction wobbly, but that's more to do. There's nothing really supporting it at this end here. But still, it should be fine once it's in your case because it won't generally be moving. And you can see there, it looks pretty good. On auto speed, we have noticed the fan, or sorry, the temperatures on this GeForce 3070 graphics card drop in temperature quite a bit. Even though these are only set on auto speed and not full speed at the moment, the temperature has dropped from 61 de degrees, that's under full load, down to 54 degrees. So that is quite a drop, that 7 degree drop by adding this cheap bit of technology inside there, which as you can tell is really handy, especially if you've got a hot graphics card. Some of the new Nvidia graphics cards get up to 70 degrees and higher, so adding something like this could make it even cooler. And obviously you can even turn the fan speed up on these to make them even faster to cool down. But obviously your results may vary depending on the fans and graphics card and case layout you have got.